Ah, another From Software game, another round of the R From Software Games Too Difficult discussion. Listen, I get it. I used to be in that boat. I avoided the Dark Souls games for years because I never understood the appeal of them. I still bought them, thinking I would one day play them. But every time I loaded up a Souls game I was immediately overwhelmed by the oppressiveness of its world and getting stomped on by every enemy I came across. I would get frustrated, uninstall the game, and go back to just watching from the outside, wishing I was good enough to play these games. I finally got hooked on the genre when I played the indie souls like Mortal Shell back in 2020. People have a lot of varying opinions on that one, but for me, it provided the fundamental mechanics in a bite-sized package that allowed me to finally understand the appeal of the genre. After I finished Mortal Shell, I went on to play Bloodborne, and the rest was history. I became a firm believer in the souls like genre, and now I don't mind a difficult game where I bash my head against the wall for a bit. It took a long time to get there though. I owned a copy of Demon's Souls when that came out all the way back in 2009, but I never actually beat the game until the PS5 remake in 2021. I went 11 years without breaking into the Souls-like genre, and the entire time I felt like I was missing out on an entire corner of games that my colleagues and the wider community constantly raved about. Games like Crusader Kings 3 come out, and I acknowledge their existence, but no, it's just not the type of game I would enjoy. I don't go leave a negative review on the game because it doesn't cater to me directly, nor do I expect it to. I just move on and realize I'm not the target audience for this sort of thing, despite, yet again, feeling like it's something I should want to experience because a ton of people are talking about it, and the fear of missing out creeps in. And then magically it just appears in my Steam library because I'll get to it at some point. For maybe a couple hours. I feel that way about a lot of games that come out that I don't get around to for one reason or another. Undertale is beloved by millions, but every time I've tried to sit down with it, it just never really clicked with me. And yet I still feel like I should play it to at least experience it, so that I can say that I have. Same goes for major franchises like Metal Gear Solid and Zelda. Obviously yes, I'm a games critic, and you can say it's my job to have played and know those games. Side note, I have played multiple games from each series, before you yell at me. But on the personal side, there's just a nagging feeling that I'm missing something that I should like and experience. For me it's a feeling that's tied specifically to video games, and one that I don't get from movies and TV shows. If I'm not interested in anime, or a certain genre of movies, I never feel bad about not watching them. But with games, it often feels like you have to be there. You have to experience this game because everyone's talking about it. You have to be there and buy it on day one. You have to pre-order it because it's the next big game. <laughs> How many of us have backlogs of dozens of games we want to play at some point because you just feel like you have to play it, and not because you actually want to? Coming back around to the discussion of Elden Ring and its difficulty, I think a large part of this debate comes from a lot of people having the fear of missing out for Elden Ring, much like I did for Souls games back before I got into the series. Elden Ring is the first game in the series that really broke into the mainstream conversation. Everyone knew about it, and the game's audience exponentially expanded, with many probably not knowing exactly what they were getting into. But because of the critical acclaim, and the immense hype from fans and non-fans alike, it's one of those rare tentpole games that just has to be played by everyone. We don't have these same discussions for real-time strategy games, 4x games, or hardcore indie platformers, because they're not as mainstream. Developers can and often do add in settings like a story mode for people that want to experience some of these games the way they want to, but From Software has never really catered to that. They make the games they want for the audience that they know will be there day one, every time. From Software is one of the developers that has always seemed to understand that, while also continuing to build upon their own formulas to make the games they make more accessible to wider audiences. Thankfully, there are other Souls-like developers that do want to cater to wider audiences. Another Crab's Treasure is a great entry into the genre, while maintaining the core design and essence of what makes a good Souls-like, while also offering difficulty settings and even a big gun if you choose. Same goes for certain 4X games. Civilization is widely regarded as a great entry point for any player into the genre, with a myriad of difficulty options and fantastic tutorials. Want to get into hardcore metroidvanias like Hollow Knight? Start with something simpler, like Isles or Haiku the Robot. For a lot of people, they want to jump right into the deep end of well-established genres that they expect players to have some familiarity with. The deep end is usually where the real treasure lies for a lot of these genres. But to get to those gems, you often have to learn how to swim first, and thankfully there's more than enough developers crafting experiences to help you get there. As Arrowhead Studios puts it right on the front page of their website, a game for everyone is a game for no one. If you've been enjoying our work for the past six months and want to help make sure we're sustainable for the long haul, joining us over on Patreon is the best way to make that happen. You can get a ton of great perks like ad-free podcasts, some written columns from Darren Mooney and occasionally other writers, merch discounts, monthly movie nights, voting for the game Yahtzee reviews during the summer game drought, and more. Your support so far has allowed us to continue bringing you the content you enjoy unimpeded, and we look forward to doing so for many more years to come. 
We release our financials publicly to you once a quarter so you can see how the business is doing and where your money is going. You can view our latest report for quarter two over on Patreon, the YouTube community tab, Twitter, or our Discord. Along with all the series, streams, and podcasts you've come to love, we have a lot of exciting things on the horizon. Be on the lookout for our new entertainment podcast, The Rewind, Marty's new retro show, The Archive, our upcoming Animal Well documentary, and the next big video from Good Blood, Metal Gear Untold. All coming soon to Second Wind.